Hi guys, um, in this video we are going to be discussing colonial empires in the Americas. In this lesson we are going to identify causes and describe effects of European expansion. We will explain the development of the slave trade. We will explain how the Inca and Aztec empires were impacted by European exploration and colonization. And we will explain the impact of the Atlantic slave trade on West Africa and the Americas. By the time that we are done with this lesson, you will have analyzed how Europeans viewed the people that they conquered. First, let's start with the conquest of Mexico. Conquistadors or conquerors are the uh, Spanish representatives who came to the Americas and conquered the natives, took their resources, and uh, sometimes converted them to Christianity. Um, they come initially from Spain, and they are trying to expand Catholicism. So a lot of the missionaries as part of the counter-reformation are trying to convert native people into, uh, to Catholicism. One of these Spanish explorers is Hernán Cortés. He sails to Mexico in search of gold and silver. When Cortés arrives in Mexico, he finds that the Aztec um, are living there. And at the time, Montezuma was the emperor in power. And when the, the Aztecs saw the Spaniards for the first time, they actually thought that they were gods. They had never seen a light-skinned man before. They had never seen horses or these great ships and weapons. And so they confused them for gods and started showering them with gifts. Um, the Spanish, uh, who had the intention of conquering the Aztec and taking their resources, uh, did so easily because they had better weapons. So even though they were outnumbered by the Aztec, they were able to defeat them because they had better weapons. They also allied themselves with the Aztec enemies, so that made them easy to defeat. Um, and one of the things that also killed many natives was the diseases that the um, Spanish brought with them to the New World. The natives did not have an immunity to things like smallpox, so when they contracted these diseases, they became too sick and eventually died. So for journal entry number 21, we are going to analyze this letter that Cortes wrote to Emperor Charles V in 1521 about what he found in the New World. It says, It happened that a Spaniard saw an Indian eating a piece of flesh from the body of an Indian who had been killed. I had the culprit burned, explaining that his having killed that Indian and eaten him was prohibited by your majesty. I further made the chief understand that all people must abstain from this custom. I came to protect their lives and property and to teach them that they were to adore but one God, that they must turn from their idols and the rites that they had practiced, for these were lies which the devil had invented. I, likewise, had come to teach them that your majesty rules the universe, and they also must submit themselves to you and do all that we, who are your majesty's ministers here, might order them. So look at the... Um, the paragraph in this letter and uh, answer the following question. What does this letter tell us about Cortes' attitudes toward Aztec culture? Do you think that he approved of their practices? Did he disapprove? Do you think that he respected their culture um, or did not respect it? And use at least two specific examples from the letter to support your answer. All right, so um, Peru was conquered also by the Spanish and the man who led this conquest is a man named Francisco Pizarro. Uh, he arrived when the Inca were recovering from a civil war, so they were weakened from fighting one another. Um, and he, what Cortes did was invite the Inca emperor to visit and then had him murdered. Um, after that, he was able to easily conquer the Inca also because of the superior weapons and the actual conquest was a lot harsher than the Aztec. So um, once these areas were conquered and under the control of the Spanish, um, governments needed to be set up. So these colonial governments were led by viceroys. Those were the governors who were sent by the Spanish king to rule in the king's name. Um, they are going to extract all of the gold and silver from this land and ship it to Spain, which then will become the strongest country in Europe as a result of having these resources. Um, the colonial society formed, and in this society, the encomienda system is the, the labor system of the colonies that force Native Americans to work the land and mines. Um, however, 
the encomienda system will not be successful in the americas because the native americans are not uh, immune to the diseases or the they die from the, mis the harsh conditions that they're forced to work under um, during this time we also see a lot of missionaries come to the colonies to convert the natives to catholicism so this new class structure develops in the americas this colonial class structure that you see pictured here the peninsulares are at the top they are Spaniards who are born in Spain, in the Spanish peninsula. And um, they are the ones who are the noble officials. They own the land. Um, they are the most powerful social class. They participate in government. They make all the rules. Beneath them, you have Creoles. These are the people who are born in Spain. I'm sorry, in the New World, um, but have Spanish parents. Um, so they don't have as much political power as people who were actually born in Spain. Uh, beneath them you have mestizos so the spanish actually intermarried with the native american population so someone who had a spanish parent and a native american parent was considered a mestizo and had less social and political power than the creoles and then beneath that you have the native american indians and eventually when they start bringing slaves over um, africans uh, will have uh, a lower class um, in this pyramid uh, in this in this pyramid, you also have Native Americans um, who are the ones who are going to perform most of the hard labor until the uh, slaves are brought in from Africa, um, and that is because they die off due to the diseases and the heart condi harsh conditions. So, to get an idea of how many Native Americans died uh, as a result of Spanish colonization, we can look at this chart here. So it is estimated that before the Spanish arrived, um, the Native American population in Mexico alone was about 25 million. By the time uh, that the, the conquest had taken place, so in a period of only about 75 years, the population had been decreased to less than 2 million Native Americans. Um, other countries are going to partake in the colonization of the Americas. France is going to colonize in what is today Canada and also along the Great Lakes and the Mississippi River. Um, the French don't really populate the area. They're more interested in the fur trading market um, that is very valuable to them, but they're not very interested in uh, building colonies in this area. Uh, Netherlands is also going to take a uh, take a piece of land in the New World. They're going to colonize around present-day New York. Um, this area was controlled by the Dutch West India Company, but was a, uh, later acquired by um, Great Britain. And then, of course, the English colonies um, originated with uh, Jamestown, which was the first permanent colony in the Americas for the English. Um, eventually, the Pilgrims and the Puritans also make their way over and settle in Massachusetts, um, searching for religious freedom. And um, th the rest of the colonies then uh, created the 13 colonies that eventually will get their independence from uh, Great Britain. Uh, so you have a map in your notes that you need to color. Um, make sure that you look at the key uh, to be able to label the countries that I want you to color. Um, and that way you'll know which territories belonged to the British, which belonged to the Spanish, the Portuguese, and the French. And so um, because the native population uh, was not meeting the labor needs in the New World, uh, due to the hard work, working conditions and disease, the slave trade then began in the 1500s. Um, the slaves were actually captured by Africans um, on the African continent because the Europeans were not immune to the diseases in Africa and could not penetrate the continent without getting sick. And so they paid um, for captured slaves um, that were brought to the coast. When the enslaved people were brought to the coast, they were then um, traded or sold uh, to Europeans. Um, the voyage that they took from the Atlant uh, fr from Africa to the uh, colonies is known as the Middle Passage. Um, during this journey, many many died to due to the horrible conditions on the ships. 
they were crammed in as many as they could fit uh they were not uh fed and they were not taken care of they didn't have uh, um, enough space to move around and um, a lot of them contracted diseases as a result of the conditions on the ship and as they died their bodies were thrown overboard and dumped into the Atlantic Ocean um, so this created a, a very profitable trade um, of slaves for the Europeans so slaves were captured on the coast and they, and they were shipped to the Americas in exchange for money. Um, there, the ship gathered raw materials, um, cotton, sugar, lumber, tobacco, and that was shipped across the ocean to Europe. Um, those raw materials then were used to create manufactured goods, things like clothing or guns or rum, and then those items were then shipped to Africa and more slaves were obtained. This created what is known as the triangular trade. Here is an image of what those slave ships looked like. Um, all of these little figures are people. Um, they were trying to maximize as much room as they could. Um, so as you can imagine, the conditions on these ships were not very healthy for the people who were being transported. Here's another um, image of the state of starvation of the slaves on the ship. As you can imagine, the slave trade had a devastating impact on um, Africa and the African culture. Um, it encouraged African warfare because uh, African tribes fought one another to obtain slaves and they were given guns, rum, and other goods by the Europeans to encourage this warfare to continue. Um, it's also going to disrupt African culture. So Africa's development will be halted um, and they will not be able to um, get rid of this legacy of violence, bitterness, and upheaval that still plagues them today. And we also see an increase in cultural diffusion. So slave traders brought with them um, new weapons and goods to Africa that had not been found there before. And Africans are also going to bring their beliefs, their legends, their music, and their culture with them to the Americas. And that will also be infused into um, the American culture. And that brings us to the end of the, of the uh presentation. If you have any questions, ask me in class and thank you for watching.